welcome back my dear students in part 2 in chapter 2 diversity in organizations in the organizational behavior course in the last big in the last lecture the definition of diversity the diversity or the two levels of the diversity the service level diversity and the deep level diversity and we discuss the expression of discrimination and the different types of the discrimination the graphical characteristics that Expressed as the service level diversity, the included and the tenure, religion, and the sexual orientation. And then today, in the second part of chapter two, we will discuss the ability term in the ability term we can we use the term ability is an individual's current capacity to perform the various tasks in a job overall abilities are are essentially made up of two sets factors intellectual and the physical uh, then we can uh, identify the ability and uh, make the definition of the ability as is an individual's current capacity to perform the various tasks in we can discuss the two types of the ability as the intellectual ability and the physical ability in the intellectual abilities are abilities needed to perform mental activities thinking reasoning and problem solving most societies place a high value on intelligence and for goal good reason smart people generally earn more money and attain higher levels of education they are also more likely to encourage as leaders of groups intelligence questions or the IQ tests for example are designed to <coughs> test the person's general intellectual abilities so too are popular college admission tests such as the SAT and ACT and graduate admission tests in business like the GMAT, law, LSAT and the medicine um, CAT testing firms doesn't claim their uh, sites dimensions making up the intellectual abilities are number of the verbal comprehension perceptual speed and the inductive reasoning reasoning and the memory we can also uh, discuss the different types of the and the dimensions of the intellectual ability as the number aptitude uh, is the ability to do speed and accurate uh, arithmetic and the verbal comprehension is the ability to understand what's read or heard and the relationship of word to each other and the perceptual speed like the ability to identity visual similarity and differences quickly and accurately and the memory like the ability to retain and recall past experience then we can return here for the slide of the intellectual ability and define the intellectual abilities uh, or abilities needed to perform mental activities thinking reasoning and problem solving like the GME 
or the general mental ability is an overall factor of intelligence as suggested by the positive correlations among specific intellectual ability dimensions and the example of this IQ test is like the Wonderlick personal test and the correlation between the intelligence and the job satisfaction is about zero. The intellectual ability uh, types as we discussed uh, there are many types of the dimensions of the intellectual ability and the description of these dimensions and some job The second type of the abilities is the physical ability. The physical ability through the changing nature of work suggests the intellectual ability are in increasingly important for many jobs. Physical abilities have been and will remain valuable reach on hundreds of jobs has identified nine basic capabilities needed in the performance of physical tasks there are described individuals different in the extent to which they have each of these ability not for there is also little relationship among them a high score on one is no assurance of high score on others high employee performance is likely to be achieved when management has ascertained the extent to which a job required each of the nine abilities and then ensured that employees in the job have those abilities we have nine basic physical abilities like the strength factors flexibility factors and some other factors the strength factors like the dynamic strength and the trunk strength statistic strength and explosive strength and the visibility factors like the extent flexibility the dynamic flexibility and there are some other factors like the body coordination balance and stamina the role of the disabilities the important of the of ability at work obs uh, obviously creates problem when we attempt to formulate the workforce policies that recognize diversity in terms of disability status as we can note it recognizing that individuals have different abilities that can be taken into account when making hiring decision in not problematic in not problem however it's discriminatory to make blanket assumption about people on the basis of disability it is also possible to make accommodations for disabilities so we have the slide of the physical abilities and the definition of this type of uh, the ability the physical ability is the capacity to do tasks demanding stamina dexterity strength and similar characteristics after discussing the different the two types of the ability is the intellectual ability and the physical ability we will discuss now the implementing diversity management strategies In the first, we can discuss the definition of the diversity management. Diversity management is a process and the programs by which managers make everyone more aware of and sensitive 
to the needs and the differences of others. The diversity management makes everyone more aware of and sensitive to the need and the differences of others. This definition highlights the fact that diversity programs include and are meant for everyone. Diversity is much more likely to be successful when we see it as everyone's business than if we believe it helps only certain groups of employees. In any organization, the attracting, selecting, developing, and retaining uh, diverse employees are uh, an important processes in any organization. Attract the diverse employees, target recruiting messages to specific demographic groups underrepresented in the workforce, and the selection process is one of the most important places for diversity efforts. The selection process must be fair and objective, qualifications are more important, and then the similarity in personality does appear to affect career advancement. We have the collectivism cultures and, individu and individualism cultures and the deep level diversity is more important than the service level diversity. One method of enhancing workforce diversity is to target recruiting messages to specific demographic groups underrepresented in the workforce. This means placing advertisement in publications towards specific demographic groups, recruiting at colleges, universities, and other institutions with significant numbers of underrep underrepresented monitors and forming partnerships with associations like the Society for Women Engineering of Graduate Minority Business Association, these efforts can be successful and reach has shown that women and minorities do have greater interest in employees that make special efforts to high a commitment to diversity in their recruiting materials, advertisements depicting groups of diverse employees as seen as more attractive to women and managers, which is probably why most organizations depict workforce diversity in their recruiting materials. The diversity advertisements that fail to show women and monitors in positions of organizational leadership send a negative message about the diversity climate at an organization. And in the attracting, selecting, developing, and retaining diverse employees, individuals who are demographically different from their co-workers are more likely to feel low commitment and turn out, and all workers appear to prefer an organization that values The, the diversity in groups, most contemporary workforces requires extensive work in group settings. When people work in groups, they need to establish a common way of looking at and accomplishing the major tasks and they need to communicate with one another often. If they feel little sense of membership and cohesion of in their 
group all these groups attributes are likely to suffer does diverse does diversity help or hurt group performance the answer is yes in some cases diversity can hurt team performance whereas in other it can visit whether diverse of homogeneous team are more effective depend on the characteristics of interest demographic diversity in gender race and ethnicity doesn't appear to either help or hurt team performance in general on the other hand teams of individuals who are highly intelligent and interested in working in team setting are more effective thus diversity on these variables is likely to be a bad thing it makes little sense to try to form terms that mix in members who are lower intelligence then uh, the diversity in group will help or hurt performance trade diversity or the demo the effective if we discuss the effective diversity programs we can say that the organizations use a variety of efforts to capitalize on diversity like teaching the managers about the legal framework for the equal employment opportunity teach the managers how a diverse workplace workforce will be better able to serve a diverse market of customers and clients foster personal development practices that bring out the skills and ability of all workers then the effective diversity programs in the organizations use a variety of efforts to capitalize on diversity including the recruiting and selection policies we have already discussed as well as training and development practices effective comprehensive workforce program encouraging diversity have three distinct components first they teach managers about the legal framework and teach the manager how does it how the diverse workforce will be better and foster personal development practices that bring the skills and the ability of these workers then we have some global implication in the, the of the organization in this chapter like the biographical characteristics intellectual ability and the diversity management we can uh, discuss uh, we discussed these biographical characteristics like some biographical very across cultures and the intellectual ability as a uh, one type of the ability uh, evidence strongly supports the idea that the structures and measures of intellectual abilities generalize across cultures so in this chapter we looked at the diversity form many perceptions we paid particular attention to three variables biographical characteristics ability and diversity programs let's summarize what we found and consider its importance for a manager trying to understand organizational behavior we can observe the biographical characteristics but that doesn't mean we should use them in management decisions most rich show fairly minimum effect of biographical characteristics on job performance we also need to be aware of implicit basis we or other managers may have an effective selection process will improve the fit between employees and the job requirements a job analysis will provide information about jobs currently being done and the abilities individuals need to perform the jobs and the applicants can 
them be tests, interviewing, and evaluated on the degree to which they processed the necessary abilities. And then the promotion and the transfer decisions affecting individuals already in the organization's employee should reflect candidates' abilities as well. New employees' care should be taken to assess <coughs> critical abilities in the job and match those with the organization's human resources. Then, to accommodate the employee with disabilities, managers can improve the fit by fine-tuning the job to better match and abilities, often modification with no significant impact of the job's basic activities, such as changing equipment or recognizing tasks within a group, can better as changing can better adapt work to the specific talents of a given employees and in the end of this chapter we discuss the diversity <coughs> management must be an ongoing commitment that crossed all levels of the organization on the group management recruiting hiring Retention and development practices can all be designed to uh, leverage diversity for the organization's competitive advantage and this, this policies to improve the climate for diversity can be effective so long as they are designed to acknowledge all employees' perceptions one shot. Diversity training sessions are likely to be effective that uh, comprehensive for these programs that address the climate for diversity at a multiple level so in this point we discuss uh, the chapter two chapter two about the diversity in organizations and here we end our chapter with these important topics or concerns in the diversity in the organization as an important part of the organizational behavior course so thank you my dear students and see you in the next lecture